Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my trigonometry tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to focus in on graphing the six main trigonometry functions, as well as domains, range, amplitude, period, asymptotes, and a whole lot more. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so first I'm going to start with sine and cosine. Now, this specifically is sine. These graphs are going to repeat in a wave pattern, and they're going to have both a maximum height as well as a minimum height. And you can see here the maximum height for sine is going to be 1, and the minimum height is going to be negative 1. All right, and all of these different points inside of here, I'm going to refer to them using radians. So if we proceed, obviously, this is going to be the zero index here. And then here at the very top of the bump, we are going to, this is going to be at pi divided by two, where we touch the line right here. This is going to be pi. Again, down here, this is going to be 3 pi divided by 2. And then way over here on the right side where we touch the line again is going to be 2 pi. And likewise, we're going to have negative pi over 2. Again, up here, this will be negative pi. This is going to be negative 3 pi over 2. And then down here where we touch finally is negative 2 pi. Now in regards to the domain, it's going to be all possible inputs. And I'm going to write this in set notation. So it's going to be all values of x such that, that's what that line means, such that x is a real number. All right. In regards to range, it's going to be all possible outputs where we have values that are less than or equal to where we have values that are greater than or equal to negative one or less than or equal to one. And in set notation, that is going to look like f x such that negative one less than equal to f x less than equal to one. Exactly like that. Now the amplitude is going to be the difference between the max and the minimum divided by two. So our maximum value is going to be one. And then the minimum value is negative one. So this is going to be one plus one divided by two, of course, is going to give us one. A period is the smallest horizontal distance over which a function doesn't repeat. And if we start right here at zero, we can see that we begin to repeat way down here where we touch our line again. And that period is going to be every two pi increments, meaning that the pattern repeats every two pi increments. That's basically it. Another thing we're gonna bring up, in this situation, there are no asymptotes, but other functions have them. And they are just values a function approaches but never reaches. We don't have any of those yet, and we will cover them whenever we do. Now, before I show you how different changes to functions are going to affect the results in the graph, I basically printed out all of the major things you basically just need to memorize. So this just means if you have a negative function or you multiply the function times a negative value, it's going to flip the graph across the x-axis. Likewise, down here, if you go and have your value of x be negative, well, that's going to flip the graph across the y-axis. Adding 1 or subtracting 1 is going to either move the graph up or down. And this, in general, is true of all functions that you would graph. If you go and add or subtract a value from the input, this is going to move the graph left or right. Very valuable information to know. If you take a number, that's what that number sign means there, and multiply it times a function, it's going to stretch away from the x-axis. And then if you divide by a number, it's going to compress towards the x-axis. Likewise, if you go and either multiply or divide by a input value to a function, it's either going to compress towards or it's going to stretch away from the y-axis. So those are some things you just need to memorize. However, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually show you the original sine function, and then I'm going to show you how other different these changes right here affect sine. 
Okay, so on the right side, you can see with this dashed green line here, the original graph of the sine function. However, let's say I would come in here and I would go and get negative sine. So I'm going to say negative sine of x. And you can see that whenever you go and multiply the sine function by a negative value, it's going to flip the graph across the x-axis. If instead you would come in here and let's go and delete that and let's go and add 1 to this value. Well, as you can see, if you go and add a value to a function, it is going to move it vertically and it will go up if you add a value and it will go downwards if you subtract a value. In a similar manner, if you would come in and add a value to the input, you would get a situation in which the value is going to move horizontally. So if you add a value to the input, that is going to move it to the left. While if you come in and subtract a value, that's going to move it to the right. So what happens if we come in here instead and multiply a value? So I'm going to say 2 times sine of x. Well, in that situation, it's going to stretch the graph vertically by 2. And likewise, dividing is going to compress the graph. If instead we would come in here and let's say we go sine of 2 times x, you can see that multiplying is going to compress while dividing is going to stretch it. And this is also going to affect the period. I'll show you in a second how to find the new period. And then finally, let's say that the input value is negative. Well, in that situation, the results are going to reflect the graph across the y-axis. So if you're wondering how to find the new period after you would go and multiply the inputs by some value, well, what you would do is go new period here is going to be equal to whatever the original period was. And here's the period, of course. So the original period and you're going to divide it by whatever the coefficient of x is. So in our specific situation, the original period was 2 pi, and we went and multiplied the input values. This is what I'm referring to, by the way. I probably should have wrote this already. So if you have 2x instead of just x, all right, and that's where the 2 comes from, and you just get a result of pi. So the new period, if you would multiply that specifically by 2, would be pi. Now with cosine, you're going to see here that at the zero that this is going to be or have a value of one. Again, where we touch right here, this is going to be pi divided by two. Whenever we reach our negative one, that's gonna be at pi. Again, where we touch again is going to be three pi divided by two, two pi. And then we're gonna go back in reverse once again. So this will be negative pi divided by two, negative pi, negative 3 pi divided by 2, and then negative 2 pi. All right. The domain for cosine specifically, and I'll write this in set notation as well. So this is going to be all possible inputs, x such that x is a real number. The range is going to be all possible outputs. So this is going to be all values of f as long as our function is less than, as long as our function is greater than or equal to negative one or less than or equal to one. The amplitude, again, difference between max and min. Well, it's exactly the same for sine as well as cosine. So this is gonna be one minus, and then this will be negative one divided by two. So amplitude again is one. And the period, again, this is the smallest horizontal distance over which a function doesn't repeat. Well, if we start from zero and wait until it doesn't repeat, it's basically everything here to the right is going to be our period. Or just like we saw with sine, it's going to repeat every two pi intervals. And once again, there are no asymptotes, but with tangent, which is coming up next, you will get to see them. And of course, all the different function changes as we saw previously are going to be affected with cosine just as they were with sine. And another thing to be aware of is that cosine is just basically equal to sine where our angle is summed with pi over two. All right, so just some things to be aware of. And that brings us to tangent functions. Now, the tangent function 
isn't defined for all real numbers. And its graph does contain asymptotes, which, as I said before, are values that are approached but never touched. So let's come in here and define those. You can see them right here. So if I come in here and with this dashed line approximate where the asymptotes are, guess what that's going to be? Well, that's going to be pi divided by 2. And you may say to yourself, well, why is that so? Well, tangent is equal to sine of this angle divided by the cosine. So you are going to have values that cannot be reached anywhere cosine has a value of 0. So basically, your, all your, of your asymptotes are going to be, here if you want to know what asymptotes is spelled like, there you go. So basically anywhere cosine is zero, which is going to be intervals of pi divided by two, that is where you are going to have undefined values. And you're going to have right here where we touch this line, this is going to be pi. And again, you're going to have another asymptote right here, which is going to be three pi divided by two. Likewise, there's going to be negative pi divided by two right here. This is going to be negative pi. And again, this will be, if we draw our dashed line in here, this is going to be negative three pi divided by two. A tangent function is going to have a period of pi. And the domain for a tangent is going to be all angles not equal to k times pi divided by 2, where k is odd. And there you go, rundown of tangents and what it looks like in regards to graphing tangent functions. And this brings us to cotangent functions, and they're just a reflection of the tangent. And in regards to them, what you're going to have is, if you have a cotangent, that is going to be equal to cosine of whatever that angle is over the sine of whatever that angle is. And the asymptotes here are going to lie, of course, where sine is zero, which is going to occur at zero as well as pi intervals. The period is also going to be pi, and the domain is going to be all real numbers in which you do not have an angle that is not equal to k times pi, where k is an integer. All right, so there is domain and cotangent, and how cotangent and cosine and sine, as well as tangent, all line up together with each other and affect each other. This brings us to secants. Now, a secant, if you remember from the previous video, is just going to be 1 over cosine. So guess what? Asymptotes here are going to lie everywhere cosine is zero. So the domain here is going to be all angles where not equal to k times pi over two, where k is odd. And you can see with the results right here, that is precisely what we're seeing here with this graph. And that leaves us finally with cosecant. And cosecant is going to be abbreviated like this and it is going to be equal to 1 over sine of x. Of course, anywhere sine is 0, then you are going to have a value that is undefined, and the domain is all real numbers, such that the angle is not equal to k times pi, where k is an integer. Okay? So there you go. There is a rundown as well as graphs of the six major trigonometry functions and how manipulating them affects their graphs. Hopefully you found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.